Hi, everybody. Uh, the word the Lord gave me for today, uh, I started getting it the other day. I stand at the back door, and uh, I was watching all the birds. And this scripture came to my mind out of Matthew, the sixth chapter, how God takes care of them. And I was watching the birds. They were landing in the trees, getting on the ground, uh, looking for food, whatever it was it's doing. But, uh, you know, they just was so carefree. They just fly around doing their thing. And I had some bread, and I was... I was going to throw some bread out to the birds. And as I opened the door and was throwing the bread out, I was thinking, my Heavenly Father feeds His birds, and so do I. And I thought, oh, isn't that cool? It, sometimes God will just, you know, we read the Scriptures and we think, well, I've read that Scripture. But then the Holy Spirit will just kind of enhance it or enlighten it a little brighter. And uh, I was thinking how God has allowed us to be a part of His creation, to experience it with Him. And, uh, you know, God takes care of the animals, and we take care of animals. But, you know, it says in Psalms, the 19th chapter, that the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament does show his handiwork. Another place in Psalms, it says, When I consider the work of thy hands, the moon, the stars, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And uh, so I think it's really cool that God's allowed us to be a part of the experience. You know, in salvation, everything, you know, we take the gospel message to the lost, We've, he's allowed his sons and daughters to be a part of that. And that's so cool to discover that there's a purpose way beyond uh, pilling your potatoes and going to work every day. And uh, so that's kind of cool. But it's, it's an experience with God that when you walk with God every day, you know, he just shows you these little things. And uh, I remember one time I was sitting on a hill, I might have said this in another video, that uh, I was looking at all these little flowers. I was just sitting down praying, and I was looking at all these little wildflowers growing right beside me. And uh, I thought, look at those flowers. It just, it just all of a sudden, it just like an explosion of color. I started seeing everything. I've never seen flowers like that before. But it just showed me, and I was looking at them, I was thinking, God, you're so awesome. I mean, what an artist. All the different colors and, and the different shapes and sizes. It was just so cool. Anyway, that's a different story. But, uh, you know, one of the things this message, you know, this message today has several points to it. He's allowed us to be a part of his creation. Uh, discover what that is for your life. Uh, another, one of the things that I've discovered that when he showed me was that he called me to speak. Me? Speak? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, you know, I butcher the English language, <laughs> but God called me to do that. And uh, he revealed that to me. And so that has brought a sense of fulfillment in my life that uh, nothing else has ever done. So then I was thinking of a scripture out of, uh, well, I said this earlier in Matthew 6 chapter. I'd like to read a few verses out of that, about that scripture, about how God takes care of the birds. Especially in this busy season, people so stressed out. There's so much worry. People worry about, you know, can I get so-and-so a gift for Christmas? Uh, are they going to like it? Do I have enough money? And so the stress at this time shouldn't be that way. Christmas should be a celebration of Jesus, a celebration of, of God's gift. And we give gifts, and I would like to think that, you know, when we give gifts, that we're really reflecting what God has given to us, His Son. And uh, it's just a reflection of giving. So it's not about how much you spend. It's about really the heart of it. And, I, you know, sometimes you just, it's a small thing that people do. It's a small gift that people give. And then you don't have to worry about taking it back, <laughs> trading it for something else or whatever. But there's a lot of pressure. I mean, a lot of pressure. You know how many billions of dollars are, are spent every year just on tongues and rollades and anti-acids? Uh, this pe this people in this country are stressed out, especially during the holidays. But anyways, I'm going to get to the word. And uh, I'm going to be reading out of an English version, uh, sixth chapter of uh, Matthew, and starting at verse 25. It says, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink, or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns. For your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you much more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Now why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon and all his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they are. 
And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. So why do you have so little faith? So God takes care of birds. You know, worry doesn't add a thing to our lives. All it does is tear it down. You know, I mean, uh, sometimes guys worry about losing their hair. Well, worry doesn't add more hair to your head or cause it to regrow. <laughs> worry doesn't make me taller if I worried about my height. Worry doesn't do nothing but bring stress and turmoil to your mind. If there's been one word that God has spoke to me over the years, more than any other word, it's don't worry. I must be a worrier. Don't worry. And, and not to worry really is to... Is, worry is actually an opposite of faith. So if you're not worrying, you, you're trusting God. So trust God. And uh, especially during this holiday season that's coming up, uh, Christmas. Uh, we just got past Thanksgiving. So all these different days that we have, people get all stressed out about it. And we don't have to be stressed out about it. So take your worry. Jesus said, cast all your care on him, for he cares for you. Another place he says, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So take your worry <laughs> out of your mind. Say, Lord, I've got all this stress in my mind, all this worry, and give it to the Lord. And he'll give you peace. When we give him something, he gives us something back. You give him the ashes of your life, he'll give you back beauty. You give him the worry and stress, he'll give you back peace. But that's the secret. you got to give it to the Lord. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He'll never suffer the righteous to be moved. So that's a little bit about worry and stress. Another uh, thing about uh, Christmas time and holidays and stuff like that is uh, it's the stress of, of the financial part of it. Now I'd like to kind of get into that out of 1 Timothy. I'm going to read out the King James for this one. Uh, he says in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, but godliness, in verse 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Uh... While, well, I'm not finish it, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But the word be content. And that's the whole, that's one of the big keys in keeping yourself worry free is to be content. You know, right now, this time of year, credit cards are maxed out to the max, uh, buying gifts and stuff. It's not your birthday. Anyway, somebody told me that one time. It's not your birthday. That's true. But uh, they're maxing out, and then they spend the rest of the year paying off that debt. And a lot of times, and you know this is true, people get gifts, and they don't want them. It's just out of some kind of a pressure. This, worldly ha this world has a pressure to buy and to give during Christmas time. And uh, it's, it's not normal. It's not reflecting what Christmas is truly about. I mean, if you really want to be a great blessing this Christmas. Tell someone to take what they're going to spend on you and go give it to some homeless person or buy some clothes for some little child that doesn't have no nothing. And then you'll be reflecting more about what Christmas is really about. But it's all about me and giving my stuff for Christmas, isn't it? Now, I understand that for little kids, but as we grow up, we should lay aside childish ways. Anyways, that's another story. Uh... Jesus said in Luke, the 12th chapter, he says, Beware of covetous, for your life does not assist in the abundance of things you possess. So, contentment. I don't have to have the latest gadget. I don't have to have that new cell phone. I don't have to have an extra one of these. If this is working, this is this Bible. I don't need another Bible, though i got a lot of Bibles. <laughs> but uh, it's not wrong to have some stuff. It's just when it becomes our God or it comes an idol in our life, and that's the problem with it, you know. Uh, you know, anytime you max out your credit card, anytime you borrow, the Bible says in uh, Proverbs 22nd chapter, it says, the borrower is servant to the lender. Anytime you borrow, you got to pay it back. If you borrow something here, you got to pay it back. You're supposed to pay it back. And that's the problem that a lot of people do. They, they borrow, 
but they don't pay back. And as scripture says in another place, it says the wicked borrow and does not pay back. You and I as Christians, we're not the wicked. We don't operate that way. God's kingdom does not operate that way. We have to be honest with people. We have to be straightforward and upfront with them. You can't do things deceptively in your life and expect God to bring a blessing in your life. If you're doing deception, if you're, if you're borrowing, knowing with full well that you can't pay it, pay it back, and knowing full well that you don't intend to pay it back, that's not the principles of the kingdom of God. That does not bring God's blessing in your life. Going on in, another, in that scripture that we started out with, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he says, All these things will be added unto you. And that's in Matthew 6, chapter also. Seek first the kingdom of God, His ways, His principles, walking in love, walking in faith. And then there's a, a subject of, uh, this message is kind of different parts all rolled into one. Then there's the subject of uh, personal responsibility. We walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, the walk of faith does not mean we got, we'll lay aside personal responsibility. We have the responsibility of paying back debt. We have the responsibility of taking care of bills. You know, I can't take my money that I promised a guy I would pay him for the rent or for the gas bill or the lights, electric, and take that and use it for something else. It's like borrowing from someone and not giving it back to them. That's personal responsibility. And I think a lot of times as Christians, we expect God to do for us what God is expecting us to do for ourselves. Uh... God will help us. If I'm looking for a job, I pray, Father, I need a job. And as I, as I, not God, goes out and lay out the uh, applications for a job, God, I believe, will give me favor and I'll get a good job. But I can't sit in my easy chair and my feet kicked up and say, well, I'm walking and living by faith. God will supply. <laughs> I have to do our, my part. You have to get up and go to work. You have to fix dinner, and God's not going to do it. God's not going to rain money out of sky and make him a counterfeiter. So all these little parts tied together is the message for today. Don't be stressed out by worry. Don't be worried about Christmas. None of that stuff. Do what you can. Anything else you give to God and, and ask him to take care of it. There's things in my life right now, I can't do nothing with it. I can't fix it. And I don't know about... Other people, but as a guy, I mean, I, I fix things, but there's some things I can't fix. So all I can do is say, Father, I cast my burden on you. Help, help, Lord, I give it to you. And I thank you for your peace, which surpasses all understanding, to guard my heart and my mind over that situation. Hey, uh, thanks for watching. Walk in peace and live in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus.